Hello friends and welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. It's actually Tuesday. Why am I starting this on a Tuesday you might ask? It's because I didn't work yesterday. <laughs> I had the day off and so technically my week only starts today. But anyway, um, I am not actually in the middle of like very many books. Okay, well that's, that's a lie. I am. I am in the middle of like a number of books but none that I am actively working on, might you say? Basically, last Friday I finished Heart of the Sun Warrior by Sulin Tan, and then I spiraled into this, like, sadness that I finished that series. <laughs> and then I haven't read anything since. But it's also put me in a kind of like romancy, fantasy romance kind of mood. So I think that's what I'm going to focus on this week, which obviously the things I had been working on prior to reading Heart of the Sun Warrior were not exactly in that genre. Um, but I am currently reading from the library The Charm Offensive by Alison Cochran, and I've heard a lot about this author and this book in particular this year. I feel like a lot of people really, really like this. And also they've just come out with a new holiday sapphic romance, which I am getting from Book of the Month because I decided when they came to Canada finally last month that I would get it and so I got my first box for five dollars. But anyway, uh, The Charm Offensive, I am 36% of the way through it and I was actually kind of scared that I would start reading this and not like it and then know that I have like a hardcover version of the, the, the second book by this author coming my way. Um, but I'm pleased to say I'm very much enjoying this. Listen, 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 is the plot of this book basically the TV show Unreal? Like do I think Alison Cochran was heavily, heavily inspired by this TV show? Yes, yes I do. However, I am thoroughly enjoying it regardless because I really liked Unreal. If you don't know what Unreal is, it's a TV show from X number of years ago. It was created by an ex-producer of The Bachelor. So the TV show Unreal was based off of The Bachelor, but it was actually produced by someone who worked on The Bachelor. And so a lot of the show revolved around the behind the scenes, like the producer's side of things, which is pretty much exactly what this book is. But anyway, if you don't know what this book is about, basically, we're following two main characters. One of them is a producer on a show that's basically The Bachelor. I honestly can't even remember what they call it in the book because in my head I, I see the words and I read The Bachelor. But basically, he's one of the producers on the show, um, but he like truly believes in true love. Like he is like a romantic at heart. Um, and then the other main character is the lead of this season who is is a tech billionaire, um, but he struggles with anxiety and OCD um, and panic attacks. And he has a reputation for being difficult to work with because of a couple of meltdowns that he's had. And his PR person has basically been like, go on the show, rec recuperate your image, you know, whatever. And, but he's like just really struggling through this entire process. Um, and Dev, the other guy, he's, he's, he's become his producer. I am not ashamed to say that I at one point in my life was very invested in the Bachelor franchise, okay? Up until probably about two years ago, for about a solid like eight years of my life was like very invested in this franchise. I watched every single season. I followed all of the Bachelor people. Uh, I followed all the gossip. I was very, very like <laughs> addicted to the Bachelor franchise. Um, and so I feel like when you are that familiar with the Bachelor franchise, you'll start to understand and so see certain like producers show up and like certain cast members have like really good relationships with the producers and become really good friends with them and so like that's always been like a very interesting part of the show to me um the parts that we don't get to see and then also you just know the show is so heavily produced and so much of what's on screen you can tell has like a producer's hand in it so that's why when the tv show unreal came out that was like amazing i loved that show and again also because it was created by someone who was one of the main producers on The Bachelor, you knew that like you were getting the kind of like a fictionalized but like a behind the scenes look at what goes on there. And so obviously this book, again, while I don't think that this is the most original book ever, like I really don't, um, I am still having a great time because like this is just an area of like media of entertainment that I just personally very much enjoy. Um, the writing is quite good as well. Like I, th I find it very like solid. Um, and so anyway, I will continue reading this. I'll give you some updates. The other book that I'm hoping to start this week, I picked up on ebook while it was on sale over the weekend, um, A Strange and Stubborn Endurance by Foz Meadows. Um, I haven't heard too many people talk about this. I know that I feel like Katie probably read this and that's how I came across it at first, but I think it's a, um, like political fantasy romance. Um, I know that there are a lot of trigger warnings for this one. A lot of people say that it is quite triggering, like right at the beginning, there's a rape scene. Um, so if that is something that you are sensitive to, just keep that in mind. But I do really want to start that this week because I think that that's just what I'm in the mood for. But you know, as you all know, my mood changes every five minutes. And so we shall see, we shall see. Anyway, that's it for this check-in and I will see you at the next one.
Hello friends, happy, I was gonna say Tuesday, but it's actually Wednesday. It just feels like Tuesday because it's the second day I'm back at work. Um, I do have a little bit of updates. I am just over 75% of the way through the Charm Offensive. I'll give you final thoughts, I feel, later, like more detailed thoughts when I finish the book. But so far I am really still enjoying this. I think it does definitely feel a little long. Like I'm not gonna lie. I think this is a little too long. I think it could have been tightened up a little bit. That being said, I am enjoying my time though. so. So, you know. Also, Charlie's best friend, Parisa, is that how you pronounce her name? I don't know. Um, but she is the MVP. Truly, truly. Everybody needs a friend like that in their life. She is just amazing. I love her. I really hope that Alison Cochran writes a spinoff about her because I would read the shit out of that. Just saying. I also wanted to check in because Spotify Wrapped is finally out. And I just want to say, <laughs> I, every single year I see this and I, I know that I listen to a lot of music just because like I live alone and I don't like um, a lot of silence. And so like, unless I'm like watching TV or listening to an audiobook, I almost always have to have like something on. But like every single year, whenever I see people post their Spotify wrapped, I still get surprised at like how many more minutes I have <laughs> compared to other people. Like I feel like on the higher end of things, people will be at around like the 50,000, 60,000 minute mark. You know what I'm saying? I am at 136,000 minutes. That's a lot. That's ex an excessive amount. And like, if I look at my top artist, which is obviously Stray Kids, of course, I apparently have spent 71,000 minutes of my last year listening to Stray Kids. <laughs> well, you know, it's fine. It's fine. Anyway, that was a really pointless check-in. I just wanted to check in because I didn't want to start work yet. That's really what it was. But anyway, I will see you at my next check-in, hopefully later today when I have finished the Charm Offensive. Hello friends, happy Friday. As usual, if you hear a lot of noise, it is what it is. <laughs> um, but I do have some reading updates. Um, I haven't been feeling well for the last few days, so life has just been a blur because I've just been like lying in bed feeling sorry for myself. Um, I think I just like ate something that doesn't sit well with me on Wednesday and I have been suffering through that for the last two and a half days. But anyway, I did get some reading done in that time though. On Wednesday night actually, I finished The Charm Offensive, which I ended up giving four out of five stars in the end. I did really enjoy it. I thought that it was really good and I think that one of my main things, if you've been around on my channel and you've heard me talk about romances at all, one of my least favorite part of romances and what ruins a lot of romances for me, even though I enjoy romances generally, is that the third act breakup is often just so bad, so bad. Whether it's because it's like unrealistic or like unreasonable or it's just pointless and it was just forced in there. A lot of times third act breakups ruin a romance book for me. However, I actually found that the third act breakup in the Charm Offensive was quite well executed. I felt like it was reasonable for adults of this age to behave this way. I thought also thought that it was uh, necessary for the kind of like individual personal character growth arts for them to take a little bit of time apart. I thought that it was just generally like in terms of the plot of this book overall I thought it was like well crafted. I thought that in terms of how it fit in with their relationship dynamics and how it progressed their characters individually but also as a couple I thought that it worked really really well. Um, so Really enjoyed that. I will say though, the thing that keeps it from being a five stars, to be honest, it's very hard for me to give a romance five stars for some reason. I just very rarely get those like five star feels from romances, again, because of some of these issues I have with a lot of the conflicts that feel just like very fabricated. I feel like five stars for me like have that level of like emotional attachment that I just don't often feel with romances. I think by comparison, if you ask me what my favorite romance of all time is, I would have to say The Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanics. I think that is just like the perfect romance. The romance was amazing. The like whole relationship, everything about that book was like perfect. There was no flaws, but there was also on top of the romance, like a really great personal arc. I feel like the Charm Offensive is like almost there. It's just not quite there yet. I felt like the, the individual arcs were good and I really enjoyed the mental health representation. I also really liked the ace rep in this book. I think that this book does a lot to discuss kind of how we as a society are so ingrained with like sexuality um, and one's particular understanding of sexuality. I think it's really great that the book opens up these conversations about that and so I really appreciate it for that. Overall I just really enjoyed this book. I do feel like the side characters were a bit like one-dimensional. 
but it is what it is and I did really like the two main characters so I think that's the most important thing. I think that there is some argument that could be made that this book perhaps does the whole like diversity for diversity sake thing in terms of racial diversity. I know the author I believe is white and obviously Dev is an Indian American main character. I obviously can't really speak to that but I think if you go on Goodreads that's actually like a lot of the like top few reviews talk about that so if you are interested in that conversation I would definitely check that out. All in all I thought it was a good time. I am more excited now to read the sapphic holiday rom-com by this author. Um, very very excited for that. In terms of what I picked up next though I started A Strange and Stubborn Endurance by Foz Meadows. Um, I am 12% into this book now. This is a fantasy romance. It's supposed to be very slow burn. It's supposed to be like political um, and I don't feel like I'm far enough in to tell you the plot yet so I will tell you at the next check-in but all I can tell you now is that it's dual POV and like each POV is five chapters so I've only just finished like the first POV so I'm on chapter six now and I kind of like that. I like that it's not just like every other chapter is like each character. I like that the chapters are really short so like for me that helps me like read a book faster if I can like get through the chapters faster. But at the same time I like that we're in one character's head and in one POV for a bit longer than just one short chapter so I really like that. One quick thing I do want to mention though is content warnings. Um, I know that this was a huge problem for a lot of people, especially I think in the ARC, the author's note was not in the ARC and the author's note does include content warnings, but it includes rape, suicide ideation, and suicidal uh, like attempts. And what you need to know, I think, going into this book is this happens right away. In chapter two is when the rape scene happens and it is on page, it is explicit. Um, is it the most graphic rape scene I've ever read in a fantasy? No. But at the same time I read a lot of dark shit and so your mileage may vary and also I'm not easily triggered by this. It didn't really like bother me that much but I do know that a lot of people found it very jarring especially because it's literally in chapter two and like I said the chapters are really short and so this is probably about like 10 or 15 pages into the book so it's quite quite quick and then from chapter three onwards and like it's being a continual thing now um, the character does have suicide ideation and so that is something to keep in mind if that is a, like a trigger for you if that is not something you want to read about uh, I would definitely proceed with a lot of caution with this book. Obviously I know that the author in the author's note mentions this and also a few reviews that I've seen says that it handles the overall arc quite well over the course of the story. That the journey of the characters is one of healing and so it's not just like you know trauma after trauma after trauma and so like I look forward to seeing how that plays out. From what I've seen from reviews it does seem to be handled well but I did just want to put that content warning on this because I know that it has been a problem for a number of readers um, and so that's just something to keep in mind if that is something that is triggering to you. Um, in terms of like the plans for this weekend I do plan on reading lots because I am just going to be home for the near foreseeable future because I still don't feel good enough to leave my apartment. Um, and so I plan on doing a lot of reading so hopefully do we think I can read A Strange and Stubborn Endurance this weekend? It's like a 500 page book. I've seen the book in stores. It's very chunky. Um, maybe, maybe. But I've also like picked up a couple of new games on the Switch. Which is a problem because I just started Pokemon Legends Arceus. And now I've kind of been in the mood for like an older JRPG. So I was thinking I might restart Nino Kuni, which I haven't actually gotten further than like two hours into I think. Um, but I want kind of want to restart it. But I also picked up Tales of Vesperia while it was on sale for Black Friday for $10. And so I kind of want to start that. I don't know. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. I have really just been all over the place recently. But anyway, that is it for this check in and I will see you at the next one. Hello friends! It is Sunday. I actually don't know when the last time I checked in was. Maybe Wednesday? Maybe Thursday? In my defense though I didn't really have much to update until yesterday in which I basically read about 80% of uh, A Strange and Stubborn Endurance and then I actually finished it this morning. So I actually finished a book since I last saw you. Uh, I hear it described as slow burn a lot and I now that I finished it I'm not sure I would let, like entirely agree with that. I think it feels slow burn in the sense that like it does take some time for the characters to meet and like get to know each other a little bit um, because the book is quite long. However I would say 80% of the book takes place over three days and so it's kind of like <laughs> is it really a slow burn? I'm not sure. That being said it, even in the book like the days feel very long like they're doing a lot of things in one day so I guess it's fine whatever. It's slow-ish burn I guess. Did I even say what the book was about? If you don't know what this book is about basically we follow two main characters obviously. It's a romance um, but Avel is from this one country 
and he is kind of like the youngest in his family and so his dad arranges this like um political alliance with this neighboring kingdom um where the other main character is from obviously and and originally the marriage was supposed to be between Vel and this the daughter of the family however when the kind of like delegation arrives from the other nation Vel is kind of caught in this like aftermath of a sexual assault from an ex-lover of his and it is revealed of course that he is into men and not into women and basically the envoy says no problem we can just change the recipient of the marriage to the son of our family so basically Vel's father exiles him um, because he's homophobic and he's like you can't be here because you're gay um, and so he sends him off on this marriage and so he gets married to his original betrothed's brother instead while this is happening, there seems to be some sort of a political plot going on. Someone is out to ruin their marriage, to prevent their marriage from happening. They're getting attacked. There's like multiple attempts on multiple people's lives. Like it's a whole thing. And so um, Vel and Kay kind of have to work to figure out what's going on, who is out, out to get them. Um, and yeah, that's basically the story. That was a really bad summary. I'm so sorry. My brain is not functioning recently. I don't know why. But anyway, that's as good of a summary as I can get right now. But I did really enjoy this one in the end. I gave it 3.75 stars. I would say like the ending is very cartoonish almost, um, which kind of felt jarring in comparison to the rest of the book, which was more slow paced and like more intricate in terms of like, it's more about like the political intrigue and the court intrigue, which I actually really enjoyed. I really enjoyed like the inheritance politics, like that kind of stuff. But then at the end, it was just like the villain monologue was just so cheesy. And like, I love a good villain monologue, but this one was just like so cheesy, A, because like, it just went on for too long. And B, I think because it was quite predictable, like it's quite obvious quite early on, like who it is. Um, so that when the reveal happens and because it's done in such a dramatic fashion, it's just like a little, it's a little too cheesy for my personal tastes. And the way that it plays out is just like, it's so, it's, it's too much, it's too much. <laughs> So I didn't love the ending and so that's why in the end it's not quite like a full four stars for me. But I really enjoyed this book. I really enjoy kind of like the political intrigue and the court intrigue and the court politics. That was really fun for me. I really like the relationship. I like the kind of journey of like healing that Vel goes on. And I really liked the role that Kay played in his recovery and helping him heal um, and fall in love again. I thought that that was a really well done kind of like arc for the character. I will say I think the fact that the book takes place over such a short amount of time kind of takes away from the the character arc a little bit because if you think about it I'm like is it really possible to get over something that traumatic that quickly? I'm not 100% sure but I guess everyone's healing journey is different so I can't really judge. I don't know. I don't know. I think I think I'm thinking about it too much. I think if I forget about the fact that this the story takes place over like three or four days. I think that the book works a lot better in my mind. Um, and so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna choose to do that. For my own enjoyment, I'm going to choose to do that. I think if I really try to pick apart this book and why this book isn't a full four stars for me, there are definitely critiques I have for this book. Um, for example, I feel like neither of the main characters really have much backstory. Like I don't feel like you really know where they came from. So even though I liked their Char both their character arcs and their romance together throughout the book I kind of like even by the end I was just like I don't know who you are like as people really another thing is like if I thought really hard about it at certain moments I was a little like is this perhaps slightly veering into orientalism territory just a little bit, just a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, a little bit. So like, it definitely did give me some pause. I also felt like at times, even though the book was exploring kind of like gender and gender fluidity and like gender roles and stuff like that, there were certain moments where I felt like Vel's character in particular, uh, Vel and Kay's characters both, kind of embodied very stereotypical uh, gendered roles. And in particular, it was that like Vel's character kind of took on the more like stereotypical like female bride kind of tendencies. Obviously it's like one of those things where I'm like the fact that I'm seeing this and the fact that I'm saying it is is it me? Am I the problem? Am I the one that is gendering all of this? I don't know. There were moments where I was like I can't tell if the author is trying to you know um put these kind of tropes on their head and turn them on their head a little bit and make a commentary on it or if it's just like a weird Thing? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know how I feel about kind of the gendered nature of their 
relationship because it very much is like uh, Kay is very kind of like the big muscly masculine. He is a cinnamon roll, but he's like the masculine dude. And then Vel is very much like very like smaller, like fits in his arms. Like I, I'll be honest, like if you made Vel a female character, this would just be a very stereotypical bog standard heterosexual arranged marriage trope, to be quite honest with you. So I don't know what this is about the book, to be quite honest with you. And that's why I'm like, I can't give it a full, full, full four stars, even though I really enjoyed it. I just like, if I think really hard about this book, there are a lot of things that I can critique about it. And so like, I don't think it's perfect. I don't think that it is, you know, the best book ever out there. However, did I enjoy it personally? Yes, I did. I did have a good time with it. And like I said, I read about... 80% of it yesterday. And so this is a chunky book. This is a chunky book. That is a lot of pages for me as one human being who doesn't read that quickly to read. Anyway, I don't know if I articulated any of that well. Um, and if I haven't, then editing Tammy can slot herself in and talk about it a little bit better, hopefully. But anyway, aside from that, though, I did finally start <laughs> Strange Beasts of China by Yang Ge. Uh, this is for my book club. If you missed the announcement, I will link it here so you can watch it. Um, but I'm really excited to be revamping my Chinese Lit Book Club. Um, this is going to be our first book. We are discussing it on December 11th, so hopefully that'll be a few days after I post this video. I'm about a third of the way, actually, because this is quite a short book. It's a novel, but like it's almost told short story style, so it's basically this alternate version of China, and we're in a city called Yongan. I don't think that's a real city, is it? I'm gonna have to look it up. I don't think it is. Anyway, whatever. We're in a city called Yongan, and in this city, there are beasts that roam among the humans and for the most part they look like humans. They just might have like one thing that sets them apart, like the color of their skin might be like blue or green or whatever, or they might have like interesting features that's, that marks them as a specific type of beast. Um, but there are different types of beasts and each chapter follows and documents a different type of beast. However, the narrator is basically like a like an amateur zoologist type of character. So they're the ones that are like researching into these different beasts. Um, but what I didn't expect going into this is this book is like really fucking sad. Um, <laughs> every single story, not story, every single chapter in this book is a sort of tragic love story of sorts. I don't think I was expecting that, but I think I'm pleasantly surprised by it. I am really enjoying it so far. It's kind of weird. It reminds me a little bit of The Cabinet by Eun Kim, which similarly is told in this like short story adjacent format and that one follows more kind of like mutant type of human beings like people with superpowers or special powers rather um, and each chapter follows like a different type of person like a different type of power. I'm not going to discuss this too much because obviously I'm going to be doing a full live show discussion with Angela um, next week um, but I do want to say one of the main themes that I've noticed so far already which I hope will carry throughout the rest of the book is this idea of like what makes a monster and what makes a man. Um, so like you have these beasts who are not humans but like, are they really, are they truly the monsters or are humans the monsters? It's like one of my favorite themes in books. Another book that explores that theme is Siren Queen by Nevo. That's one that I can think of that I read recently, like this year. And I'm really hopeful that this will be at least a four star read for me. Fingers crossed. Um, so I'm going to continue on this today. But aside from that massive update, I don't know what I'm going to be reading next. So once I decide, I will let you know and I will see you at the next check in. Hello friends, happy Monday. I have some reading updates. I didn't read too much last night. I did spend a lot of the night playing Tales of Vesperia, so oops. But I did start and finish a manga series. <laughs> um, it's only five volumes long, so it's like very short, um, but it is Decagon House Murders. Um, this is based on a mystery novel. So if you've read the novel, if you've heard of the novel, um, I'll insert a picture of that as well so you can see it. I think it's the same story. I don't know. I haven't read the novel. I'm kind of interested in reading it now. Um, and I do have the audiobook on Hoopla, so I might like give it a try one day, maybe like after some time so that I'm not comparing it to the manga because like, spoiler alert, I love the manga. I gave it five out of five stars in the end. I think for the majority of the manga, it was like a solid four stars. I was like, this is really good. I really, really like the art style. The art style is beautiful. Probably one of my favorite art styles of manga that I've read like recently, um, like new to me art styles. And then the plot itself, I was like, this is fine. This is good. And then volume five, I was like, I still think about this plot twist. I was so shocked and like the reveal, the way that it played out was so, so well done. It makes me so mad that there are no physical copies of this available because like it's only five volumes. I would have just bought all five volumes. I'm really, really upset that there are no physicals for this. 
I did borrow most of it from the library. My library had volumes one to four and then I just ended up having to buy volume five because I couldn't find it on like any of my like library apps or anything. So um, I did end up buying volume five, but it was like so worth it. But let me give you a summary of what it's about to see if you are interested in this, either the book or the manga, because I think if the book plays out the same way as the manga, like I feel like I can recommend it because I think this is a really like interesting solid mystery. Basically, you're following this group of like college students who are part of this mystery club. So if you like that kind of trope, so if you like the kind of like Kim Daichi Case Files type of murder mysteries, I think you'll like this because this does, again, same similar thing, follows like a group of students who are um, in like a murder mystery club. Um, obviously, Kim Daichi Case Files, they're in high school, it's like different. But like it has a lot of the same vibes as that one. There's like multiple things going on here. So I'm going to try to explain it in a way that makes sense. But like it is a little convoluted. Basically the story opens up with these seven students who are part of this like mystery club. And they're going to this island as a part of their spring break. And on this island there is a house called the Decagon House. And so it's shaped like a Decagon. And that's where they're staying. But next to that house on the same island is a house that like burnt down. So there's only like the remains of that house left. And what happened in this house is that there was a series of murders and then the house was burnt down with everyone in it. Um, so I think it was like a man, his wife, and then there was like another couple and their gardener, I think, but then they couldn't find the body of the gardener. So the police suspected that the gardener did the thing and then like ran away. Who knows? Point is, it's like a bit of like an unsolved mystery. So that's kind of why this like mystery club, they're like there for the, for the lols, I guess, like just to be in the murderous vibes, I don't know. And while they're there, they receive these like seven like name cards almost, and they're labeled. So there's one that says murderer, this one that says detective, and then there's five victims. And they're all like a little spooked because there's obviously seven of them. And so like, they're like, who's the murderer? Who's gonna be the detective? Who are the victims? And then obviously people start dying one by one and it's like a whole thing. And so that's that part of the mystery. Meanwhile, on the mainland, there are two students left on the mainland who didn't go on this trip. One of them is still part of the club, but he just didn't go on the trip. Um, and then there's another one who used to be part of the club, but she left the club. So she's obviously not being invited on this trip. And so on the same day that these seven students go on their trip, these two students receive letters, letters that are addressed from the man who allegedly died in that house that burned down on that island. Um, and they're addressed to them saying that they had a part in killing his daughter. And his daughter is someone who also used to be part of this murder mystery club. And she died and drowned in this boating accident that they were all a part of the previous year. Are we following along? Because I'm barely following along. Um, but there's basically like multiple mysteries going on in the present day. There's obviously like the two main mysteries. So they're trying to figure out who is sending these letters and what is going on. And then there's obviously the island por portion of the mystery, which is where all the murders are happening. And then there's like the past mysteries of both the house and like how they all died and who actually murdered the people in the house that burned down. And then there's Chiori, who is the girl who like drowned. Um, and then her mystery in like trying to see if there's anything like fishy going on there or whether it was just like truly an accident. Um, anyway, there's a lot going on. It's a very quick five volumes, I feel, especially once you get into it. I think the first two volumes where they're setting up the story and it's a little, still a little convoluted because like, I think you can tell from what I just explained, it's a little convoluted. So like in the first volume, I was like, I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this, to be quite honest with you. And then the second volume, I was like, I'm starting to grasp this. This is okay. People are dying and I'm intrigued. And then by volume four, I was like, I, I need to know what fucking happens. And then volume five was just honestly so fantastic. I actually, I can't. But all that to say, highly recommend this manga. I thought it was like a really great murder mystery manga. And it kind of made me nostalgic for um, some of the like murder mystery mangas that I grew up on. Like, like I said, Kendaichi Case Files, like Tante Gaku and Q. Those are like my favorites growing up. Um, so maybe I will revisit this genre of like murder mystery manga, perhaps. In terms of what I'm picking up after this, like tonight, I think I'm going to end this vlog either tomorrow or the day after. Um, but I don't know yet. So I will let you know. I kind of wanted to read an audiobook because I've been in a like major switch mood and obviously I want to do the switch audio hybrid. However, I have I haven't really been in an audio booking mood recently. So I don't know. I'll keep you posted and I will see you at the next check-in.
Hello friends, it is 10.30 p.m. on Tuesday night and I thought I would do one final check-in. I feel like this is like a good time to check in. First things first, I did get some book mail. Long story short, I bought a couple of books a few weeks ago and then on Black Friday, because it was 20% off, I actually picked up Nona the Ninth. And then on Cyber Monday, everything that I had bought in the last couple of weeks was 33% off. And so I, obviously, being the cheapskate that I am, uh, reordered them and then returned the original ones I bought. And now I finally have the books that I've been waiting for. However, in a very disappointing turn of events, uh, my copy of Known in the Ninth is damaged. I don't know if you can see that, but there's legit like a cut just along the dust jacket. So I'm gonna attempt to get this exchanged next weekend. Honestly, what a fucking hassle for $4 in savings. Like what, why am I like this? Why did I, why did I do this to myself? But anyway, I am happy about these two. Um, I did pick up volumes two and three of the Grandmaster of Demonic Cultivation. These are the novels that my favorite TV show, The Untamed, are based on. Um, and I did actually read volume one last year when it came out, one of my lovely subscribers gifted me that one for Christmas, but I didn't end up picking up these two when they came out because I just wasn't sure if I really wanted to invest in this series because they are kind of pricey. Um, but then I saw them in store one day and then I just like, I caved, I caved, I bought them. Um, I actually did pre-order books four and five as well because they were 33% off, which is a much more reasonable price for these books in my opinion, because they're not like the most well-made books either. Anyway, point is I have these now. I'm really, really excited. I kind of want to reread volume one. I might just like skim read it because I have been through that story so many times at this point. So I might just skim through that one and, and then I'm gonna probably dive into these two soon. But in terms of reading updates, I did actually just finish Strange Beast of China by Yanga. And I honestly, I'm gonna need some time to sit on this. As of right now, I actually don't know what I would rate this book. I feel like overall, I really enjoyed it. I really like some of the revelations we had at the end. And I also feel like this has like a very dreamlike quality to it. Again, I think I've already mentioned this, but this does remind me a lot of The Cabinet by Eun Soo Kim. And as the book goes on, it's not as like dark and gruesome as The Cabinet. Um, but it is sad. Like there is a lot of sadness in this book. And I think the overwhelming vibe of this book is definitely sad. As of right now, I really enjoyed it, but I do also feel like a lot of this book went over my head. So I'm gonna have to sit on it a little bit. I don't entirely know how I feel about this like short story style narrative. Uh, I like it, but I don't know if I love it. By comparison, again, obviously, cause that's the only one I have to compare to really. I did prefer it here because I feel like the chapters are a bit longer in Strange Beasts of China than in the cabinet. So I do feel like it's less disjointed. And I also feel like the way that it's told, every single chapter starts off as like a bestiary entry. So it's like it introduced the beast, but then throughout the chapter, it's actually you follow the narrator's journey. And so I feel like the narrator is more of a consistent character in this book than in the cabinet. Um, again, I'm so sorry to like constantly be comparing them, but like in my head, it's just like these books are so similar to me. And I think also because I just recently read that one. Anyway, point is I'm gonna have to sit on this. You're just gonna have to tune into the live show if you are interested in my like in-depth thoughts about this. I'm definitely gonna have to like think about this for the next couple of days until the live show um, and do a little bit of research as well on it. But yeah, anyway, I guess that's it for this check-in and this vlog. If you stuck around till the end, as always, I super appreciate it. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below. If you can't think of anything, just leave me a moon emoji because there's a moon on this cover, um, like a full moon emoji. And if you like this video and you want to see more from me, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That is it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye.